In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate the 21st Sunday in ordinary time, and Jesus gives Peter the keys of the kingdom of heaven. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us and make us holy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from a prophet Isaiah. 
Thus says the Lord of hosts to Shebna, the master of the palace. I dismiss you from your office. I remove you from your post. And the same day I call on my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I invest him with your robe, gird him with your sash, entrust him with your authority. And he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I place the key of the house of David on his shoulder. Should he open, no one shall close. Should he close, no one shall open. I drive him like a peg into a firm place. He will become a throne of glory for his father's house. The word of the Lord. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will bless you. I will adore before your holy temple. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. I thank you for your faithfulness and love, which excel all we ever knew of you. On the day I called, you answered. You increased the strength of my soul. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. The Lord is high, yet he looks on the lowly. And the haughty he knows from afar. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. How rich are the depths of God! How deep his wisdom and knowledge! And how impossible to penetrate his motives or understand his methods! Who could ever know the mind of the Lord? Who could ever be his counsellor? Who could ever give him anything or lend him anything? All that exists comes from him. All is by him and for him. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ 
Christ was reconciling the world to himself, and he has entrusted to us the news that they are reconciled. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came to the region of Caesar of the Philippi, he put this question to his disciples. Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, some say he is John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But you, he said, who do you say I am? Then Simon Peter spoke up. You are the Christ, he said, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, you are a happy man because it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. So I now say to you, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. Then he gave the disciples strict orders not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. So said Jesus to Peter in today's Gospel. But was Peter really a firm rock on which to build a church? Well, it depends which Peter you look at. There's the Peter before Pentecost and the Peter after Pentecost. Before Pentecost, he really showed how human he was. Misunderstanding Jesus when Jesus predicted his own death and saying to Jesus, this must not happen to you. Which led Jesus to say to him, get behind me, Satan. Not a very promising start for the head of the church. And of course, later on, Peter was to deny Jesus when Jesus needed him most. But despite his failings, Peter was able to come to an understanding of who Jesus was. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus must have caused 
quite an impact in his preaching, his teaching, his miracles. So there would have been loads of people saying, who is he? And perhaps Jesus himself too was wondering what other people were thinking about him as he grew in understanding as to who he was himself. Perhaps too, he was most interested in how his disciples thought about him, who they thought he was. And so from asking that question, it's Peter who professes his faith. Obviously, Peter took some understanding as to what the Son of the living God was. He perhaps had his own ideas of what a Messiah should be and couldn't cope with Jesus suffering and dying later on, which is why he perhaps denies him. But all became clear at Pentecost with the coming of the Holy Spirit. And that transformed Peter from being afraid in the upper room to going out and preaching in front of 3,000 people. When Jesus first chose Peter to be a disciple, perhaps Jesus saw in Peter something that Peter didn't see in himself. He saw the leader that Peter would become. Like Peter, Jesus calls each one of us to follow him. Again, like Peter, Jesus sees in us something that we may not see in ourselves. Why Jesus calls us to do specific tasks is probably another mystery in itself. As St Paul reminds us in his letter to the Romans, how impossible is it to penetrate God's motives or understand his methods. But still, Jesus calls us. And just as the Holy Spirit transformed Peter so he could fulfill the potential that Jesus saw in him, so the Holy Spirit can transform us too. We proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of a Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory 
to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophet, I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, Daring like Peter to confess Jesus as the Christ, let us pray to the living God with trusting hearts. We pray for Pope Francis, Bishop of Rome, and all bishops and pastors, that they will bear constant and joyful witness to the Son of God. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Christian communities in every land, that they will minister the healing mercy of God to all who seek it. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the leaders of nations, that they will promote world peace by renouncing the testing and storming of nuclear weapons. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the world community, but remembrance of the abolition of a slave trade will herald an end to human trafficking. Lord, in your mercy, We pray for all whose work or volunteering benefits the community, that their service will inspire us to care more lovingly for one another. Lord, in your mercy, We pray for those facing greater loss because of a coronavirus pandemic. But just economic measures will ease their burden. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are ill, those in our newsletter, and those we know. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who have died recently, and for those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our own intentions.
Lord, in your mercy. We ask Mary, our mother, to pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Living and life-giving God, you anointed your Son, Jesus, as Saviour of the world. Keep us true to his name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread of the body, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it shall become our spiritual faith. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just 
our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in his Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather the people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we 
celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victory by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you after passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our hearts. But by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all despairs as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So at this time, we can make an act of spiritual communion. We can invite Jesus into our lives, and he will come.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord, As this church will be opening up for masses again for the first time since the lockdown next weekend, this will actually be the last time I'll be recording a mass for a Sunday on YouTube. So can I just say a thank you to everyone who has viewed these masses. I hope you've got something out of it. And wherever you have been viewing them, may God be with you always. Later on in the year, hopefully I will have the capacity to be able to stream Masses live. So if you aren't able to worship at Mass, there will be an opportunity to worship at home. But just to say thank you once again for joining me on YouTube during this time. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.